Now, as soon as our database gets bigger and is potentially also on a big Endian platform, transportable table spaces and full transportable export import come into play. So let me show you this here and go into more details for transportable table spaces and FTX. First of all, cloud is always little endianus. If you have a big endian platform, we have to migrate. Typically, if the database is not too big, we would start with data pump. But as soon as the database has a certain size, and I can't give you uh, like a fixed figure, only ballpark figures are several terabytes, then uh, data pump gets too slow and the extra work necessary maybe for transportable table spaces pays back. So we use transportable table spaces or the improved version full transportable export import. Which means we have a big Endian platform like HP, AIX, IBM, Set Linux or Power-based Linux, Spark Solaris. Here we have some table spaces in this slide. On-prem big Endian needs to be migrated over. So we take the table spaces, read only, copy, and as we go cross as we convert them and then do the extra stacks for transportable table spaces. Full transportable export import plus incremental backup. So this is like the master discipline of transportable table spaces. If you're tired of building everything by yourself, like the users and the privileges, you take FTX. And you can use both together. So full transportable export import on the right side of the slide takes away all the complexity. Uh, it's a one co command migration with data pump. And ARM and incremental backups can take away the copy time because you will copy your files at a time when it's not causing any downtime and only an incremental backup will be created in the read-only phase, synced to the cloud, converted and applied there. And for that purpose, we deliver Perl scripts. And I can highly recommend that you use these Perl scripts because they ease your life a lot. So they automate not only the incremental backup procedure, but also the conversion and also the merge and the apply process, which is really key here. So a few important things to know, when you create your cloud database, you should create it with the identical character set, which means it matches the exact character set as the source and also the identical national character sets. Take also care on the time zone files. Um, otherwise, the import may be a bit of a hack. And if you can't create in the cloud or if you don't want to create the database in that character set, then you may migrate your source before migrating it over to the cloud, also character set wise. In some cases, it sounds like a lot of work, but if you don't have much data which needs to be converted, it can be fairly quick. And the DMU, the Data Migration Assistant for Unicode, which is in your Oracle homes, you just have to change the executable bit of it when you start it, and the DMU has a separate directory in your Oracle home. If you deal with incremental backups, it's very, very advisable to check the V$ blockchain tracking. And if there's no blockchain tracking file, enable that. So on the source enterprise edition feature, all the database enable blockchain tracking. And this will speed up the incremental backups a lot. The conversions of the files necessary should be done on the cloud platform typically, because that is most likely much faster than on a source and the Perl scripts will do the conversion and it just depends how you set your staging location. If you set this to the object storage in the cloud, then you can convert there and this makes it much faster. Now full transportable export import, how does that work? Just the basic figures. We have here our small on-prem database, very simplified here. And the part is that we create a new database in the cloud or a pluggable database, if it goes into a pluggable database, both works flawless here. Then once this is created with the right character set, the right national character set, we set our data table spaces read only. And when the table spaces are read only, we copy and convert the files. So no Perl scripts involved at this point. This is just standard. You run Armin in the cloud site and you convert to the Linux platform. Let's say it's coming from an AIX system. 
Okay, now the table space is there, uh, but we need to connect it to the database. And you see there's also views, codes, grants, triggers, and users. So everything needs to be brought over. And here, data pump comes in. So with one command migration, two keywords are important. Full equals yes, and transportable equals always. And then data pump does the full job for us and rebuilds the users, um, all the exports, it does the table space export, what's in the table space, import it, connects it to the database, sets the table spaces read write, and then you can set your table spaces read write on the source platform at the very end as well. So this is a good approach, an easy approach. And if you want to do this now with minimal downtime, so you see the clock popping up in the middle of the slide, which means now we are downtime constrained. We have a very large database. And in this case, we deal now with incremental backups. So we created the new database already. We may have created the users or not. I don't create them in this case. So what we do now is, instead of taking my table spaces read only, I take a level zero backup. And this is utilized by the Perl scripts. And a level zero backup may be, let's say we have a 60 terabyte database. We have a 60 terabyte level zero incremental image file, um, not incremental yet, image file copy backup. Needs to be stored in the cloud, converted, put into the target destination. And this is all done by these Perl scripts. So you have one XTD properties file, you define that, the Perl scripts, you just call the Perl script and they do this for you. This may have taken a few days in worst case. Now we take a level one backup. This is just a differential backup. And especially when you go to the cloud and when you migrate to the cloud, you will do more of these level one backups because the more often you do them now, the smaller they get. And when you have smaller files to copy over and to convert, it's just faster. So the ideal scenario is that the last incremental backup is really small. We can copy it over to our cloud storage within a few minutes maybe, or maybe half an hour at worst case, then convert it, merge it, it's there. And now the final downtime phase begins because now we set the table spaces read only. We do the final level one backup, differential, convert, merge on the other side. And if that is merged, now our files are fully consistent. And now I call data pump and data pump rebuilds everything for me. So all these objects, code, grants, and of course the users here as well. So let us create the users as well. Done by data pump, everything created on the destination side. And then that's it. So we combined, we tackled complexity, data pump took over the manual work, incremental backups work as well with this technique. And if you would like to look closer, at the end we can set a table spaces read right here. If you would like to look closer how that works, we have an exercise in the hands-on lab and Roy, long time ago, recorded a real-time video. We had really waited until it was up in the cloud. He migrated in the OCI Classic a long while ago, but the technique is still the same. And you can scroll forward if you want to. But even though the video is now over four years old, it still it works exactly the same way. There is no difference here. So a nice video to watch about that technique.